Today I want to talk about extinct reptiles. And when we first think about that, obviously the first thought is dinosaurs, right? Well, not exactly reptiles. So if we're interested in that, then we think about Megalania and Titanoboa. But they've actually been extinct for quite a long time. Probably not too many human beings ever interacted with Megalania and none interacted with Titanoboa. So, someone requested that I talk about more recently extinct reptiles. And so it took me a while and I was doing quite a bit of research and digging and I found a list of reptiles that I don't think he was necessarily thinking about, but ones that have died much more recently in comparison to human beings. So recently, in fact, that there may be some still out there alive today. And so, to start off this list, I want to talk about one that I'm really hoping is still around, and that is the Navasaur rhino iguana. So, we all know about the rhinoceros iguanas right now that live, they're part of the Cyclura genus, they're the rock iguanas in the Bahamas, Caribbean, Central American islands. This was one subspecies called the Navasaur rhinoceros iguana. And it was last seen in the 1800s. In fact, the very last documented sighting of it was in 1878. But it was not officially declared truly extinct until 2011. And that's because they were still pretty convinced there might be some out there. In fact, they did several surveys from the 1960s into the 90s, but they never, unfortunately, were ever able to find any living species of these animals. And there are a number of prevailing theories as to why they actually went extinct. The first one is obviously introduction of non-native species. Cats, mongooses, birds, goats, pigs, livestock that, you know, ends up decimating their habitat, eating their eggs, that, you know, just ends up creating a situation where they can no longer th thrive. Another, issue, another theory is that miners that were on their island ended up actually killing them on purpose because they were either in the way or they were deemed a nuisance or a pest. And there was even before, the, uh, before 1920, in the 1920s, there was actually a military occupation on the island that they was found at that they think also may have added to their decline in population. So while we haven't seen one alive for quite some time, I really want to hold out hope that this species of iguana is still alive. Probably just because I really like Cyclura in general, although mine hates me, but I really hope they're still alive. This next one is one that maybe not too many have heard of, and that is the Underwoods Musarana. So this is actually a species of snake that I'm going to end up talking a lot about their extant or living relatives, Musaranas, that live on mainland South America. This species of snake, the Underwoods, went extinct during the 1800s, the late 1800s, and hasn't been seen for quite a while, but they did live on several island locations on specifically St. Lucia in the Caribbean. And so hopefully because islands end up being these kind of weird places where things can kind of go unseen for a while, that there might be some kicking around. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about Musarana so that way it'll kind of hopefully infer some things about them. So Musarana, in case anyone wasn't aware, is a species of colubrid snake found in Central and South America and obviously in the Caribbean and islands and places like that. They actually can kind of give the Kribo a run for its money on the largest colubrid in the New World. Musaranas typically achieve lengths of five and a half to sometimes over eight feet long. The Underwoods Musarana probably would have been on the lower end of that scale just because they were on the island of St. Lucia, which is much smaller. So island species usually end up being a little bit smaller. These guys were a really cool type of snake that honestly I wish I had the chance to work with. Not just the Underwoods, obviously, but regular extant living Musaranas too. They're kind of a mellow, chill snake for being so large. They do unfortunately have a bit of a mild rear fang venom which, although they've done research into it, it's actually a less medically significant bite than a lot of other rear fang venomous snakes, such as the bamboo snake, the mangrove snake, or even a hog nose. And they're also usually pretty reluctant to bite, even when being handled, including wild-caught animals that are being worked on. They are known snake eaters, and so it's thought that that's probably what the Underwoods would have also eaten. Specifically, they have an immunity or an anti-venom to Bothrop's venom, which is a Central and South American pit viper, specifically the lanceheads. 
So, you know, like the deadly lancehead viper, that's both rops. And there's even a preserved specimen of the Underwoods actually eating a young Bothrops viper. So we do know that they did at least use that as part of their staple diet. This was a really cool animal. It wasn't officially declared extinct until 2016. So I'm really hoping that there are some out there. And also I'm hoping that in my travels I'll be able to play with an actual living Musarana too. The next animal on the list is another species of snake called the Barbados racer. And this animal actually went extinct much more recently, so we know a little bit more about it to enough to where it even had another common name, and that was the tan ground snake. So if any of the people here live in the southeastern United States, like Florida, that type of area, we know about racers, right? Those really fast moving colubrids. This was another type of snake like that. They didn't get very large, only about three feet or one meter for the non-Americans among us. So they didn't get very large, which kind of makes me hold out hope that there are still some around. They kind of disappeared during the 60s. The last known true verified sighting was in 61, and then there were a couple other ones that were unverified in 1963. So I'm kind of holding out hope that there are still around. They think the reason why it went extinct again is unfortunately the introduction of non-native species that just kind of did away with their habitat or fed on their eggs. We don't know... There isn't a whole lot about them because they weren't really studied that much. People really didn't care about reptiles until much more recently. So even though this animal kind of disappeared in the 60s, we don't know too, too much about it other than the fact of what we kind of know about other racers. So it probably fed uh, during the day. It was an active hunter like colubrids on mainland Central and South America and North America, obviously. And it probably ate frogs and lizards during the day. So that's... Hopefully there's still some out there. I think it'd be really cool. I always hate to hear something that went extinct during our lifetime, especially when it was really our fault. One more species of snake, and this is one that if any of you viewers out there subscribe or check out Reptiles Magazine, you might have actually heard about, and that's the Round Island Burrowing Boa. So this is a species of Old World Boa that was found on several islands in a little archipelago east of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. So these were last documented in 1975 on Round Island. They were found on several other ones, but they were most prevalent and last seen on Round Island. It's uninhabited by people, but there have been several non-native species introduced that also showed up that are probably the reason why it disappeared. This animal was really cool because like a lot of other species of snake, like the burrowing pythons, they're a monolithic species, which means it's the only species in their genus. So there's not a whole lot of them out there. We don't know too, too much about it, about it, because based on how it looked, it was probably very fossorial, just like the burrowing python. And it wasn't out and about very much. It was on an uninhabited island. It didn't get very large, only about three, and a, about three to four and a half feet long with females being larger. So we just didn't really know too, too much about this animal. Like, unless it's kind of dynamic, we didn't know too much about it until very, re until very recently. We've really kind of started to care more, which is really depressing to say out loud. But Reptile Magazine did do an, a little bit of a snippet, basically kind of summarizing what I'm saying right now, too. So that's where you may have heard of it right now. They were an interesting species where they were kind of, you know, again, that's three and a half to four foot-ish long snake. It was kind of a light mottled brown with some darker spots. Think of it kind of like the build of a boring python or a really large sand boa with the coloration of like a dark spotted python. They looked kind of cool. Um, again, we don't know too much about them. Based on their head shape and the area that they were found, they probably ate a lot of like terrestrial geckos and lizards. Probably fossorial, fairly nocturnal. And it'd be really cool to be able to see them again if they were last seen in 1990, in 1975, which kind of holds out hope, which saying it out loud makes me realize that it's been over 40 years, but I'm holding out hope that they are still around. The last species is another species of lizard, and this is the one that actually went extinct most recently. So hopefully they are still around but the rapid decline kind of gives me the least amount of hope of everyone on this list, honestly. And this is the Christmas Island skink, or the Christmas Island whiptail skink, specifically. So 
This animal lives mostly on Christmas Island. It's found in Southeast Indonesia. And they were actually one of the most common species of lizards on the island of Christmas Island. And then in 1998, they noticed a severe decline in the sightings and population of the whiptail. And it was most likely due to deforestation because it was heavily being colonized and populated by people, as well as, again, the introduction of new species, specifically cats. And by 2005, so just seven years later, they were declared extinct in the wild. There were several others that were out and about living in captivity in zoos and different facilities, and probably a couple of people just had them as pets too. But the last known animal was a female that died in 2014. And in 2017, they were declared extinct, so not that long ago. But the fact that there was enough research and notation that there was a complete drop of very specific concrete dates makes me think that they were paying a little bit more attention to this, which leads me to think that there isn't a whole lot of hope for this species, unfortunately. So with all of those five species and about another 11 more since like the last 150, 200 years is not really great. It kind of makes me skeevy and I'm going to do my best not to get on a pedestal here, but this kind of ends up bringing, hitting a point kind of close to home with us reptile keepers about invasive and non-native species and why we need to be very, very, very careful moving forward going on with how we keep our animals. We can't afford to have any more animals getting out and interfering with the ecosystem, however dramatized it may be for the popular media. We really can't afford that anymore if we want to continue to be able to have these animals. So with that in mind, just Sorry, this is a bit of a downer ending for this kind of downer episode, but hopefully you learned something from this video, not necessarily like a moral, but maybe some different species of animals that you never knew even existed. And hopefully one day we'll be reading a CNN article that they were recently found again. And I would love to be able to say that, you know, some random guy that gave an animal to Ty Park ends up being... 100% Navasar rhinoceros iguana, which would just be absolutely amazing. So hope you enjoyed this video. I have a whole playlist of uh, five different cool, like the top five lists, which I know aren't really like my original thing, but you guys really seem to like it. So if you can go check out that playlist, there's a whole bunch of really cool animals that I talk about in every single one of those videos. If there's anything you'd like to see, please let me know down in the comments below. Hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.